Hi everyone, I'm Greg and I did mine on how to ski the backcountry. I've skied a lot in the backcountry and places I've previously lived. So step one, it's really important that you know the terrain. By finding rocky terrain and scoping for snowdrift and loose snow, you're going to know where you're going and you're going to know where the rocks are and what to avoid and what not to avoid. So, and by looking for loose snow and snowdrift, you can identify possible avalanches. The main hazard in the backcountry is an avalanche. So to look for an avalanche, you want to look for unstable signs of snow. So if the snow has like cracks in it, it means it could be loose. And every avalanche needs a trigger, and that could be wind or a skier or a bomb. Some backcountry organizations will um, put dynamite on a backcountry slope to set off an avalanche so a skier doesn't do it themselves. And avalanche terrain, again, snowdrift, loose snow, you want to avoid at all costs. If it snowed a lot the previous day, um, that could be a sign of loose snow. So the way an avalanche works is once it's triggered, the loose snow will come off from the hard snow and it's going to start piling up and causing the other loose snow to fall with it because the weight will build up. And the most common areas to be found if you're caught in an avalanche is, are in tree trunks, rocks, or at the bottom because they have the tree trunks and rocks, rocks can have divots. And at the bottom, that just means you got carried to the bottom. So how you rescue someone in an avalanche is you need three tools. You need a beacon, a shovel, and a probe. And you, if you go and your friend gets caught in an avalanche, what you're going to do is you're going to put your beacon into search mode. There are two modes for a beacon, transit mode and search mode. You're going to want to be on transit mode when you um, start your run because that's going to give off a signal. And when you put it in search mode, it's going to locate the other signal. So once it's in search mode, it's going to give you meters from the other signal and it'll show an arrow of which way it is. Once you find them, you're going to use your probe and attach it together and use it to stick in the snow to find the other person. And even though you might poke them in the eye, it's better than them getting killed in an avalanche. So once you find them, you're going to lay out your poles in a square formation and start digging. You have up to 15 minutes to dig them out. That's when the lack of oxygen starts to um, be effective. Luckily, there aren't that many avalanches incidents a year. The median between 2012 and 2022 is only 20, and a median fatalities is only 24 for each season. The record high was in 2020 to 2021, because that was record-breaking snow in the US. So I thought I'd end it off by sharing some backcountry places to ski that are some of the best in the world. Japan is one of them. It has arguably the best backcountry in the world. I haven't been here, but the snow pretty much looks like this. It's always perfect. This is Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I took these photos around two years ago, and the way it works in Jackson is there are seven bowls, and you can see the top of the tram here, and you'll hike out, and all of this is just backcountry. This is also Jackson Hole. I really like this image because you can see the clouds are covering the town, and the snow is just perfect there. This is Alpenthal in Washington. It's a really small resort with only two chairlifts, so it's mainly focused on the backcountry. When I went there, we hiked out, and the re main resort is over behind this mountain. We hiked out through this whole bowl and skied behind this cliff over here. And yeah, that's my TED Talk. Thanks for watching.